Okay, what we got here is a 2000 Pontiac Grand Dam. It doesn't seem to matter where you put any of the controls to do anything. The fan just does not work. I guess they just replaced this um, component here, the switches. So, um, first thing we're going to do is check for the fuses and make sure all the fuses are good. They're supposed to go to the heater. And then we'll go from there. Well, I've done now. I've checked all the fuses and everything looks good. And I still get nothing. So, what I'm going to do is there's a switch up underneath the here, under the bottom of the dash. And you can take this stuff out and get to it. Okay, down here in the bottom, this first bit comes out, and right here is a push pin. And see, when you push this in, it makes this bottom down here expand. It won't come out of the hole. So to get these out, you just simply pull the center out. Then, there's one right here, and there's a bolt up here. So there's two bolts to get this piece off. Okay, from further looking at it, I don't think the glove box is going to do us much good. Okay, see how this is made? It fits right up into here. So that's just a slide in thing, so we can push this off to the side. And here, let me see. Here's the blower motor, and here's the two wires going into it that feeds it. And then back here in the back, you see this group of wires, and there's a couple of bolts there. That's the resistor and that's what changes your fan speeds so what I want to do is probe in here with it on and see if I have power here and if I have power there then what I'm going to do is jump with the motor and see if the fan motor runs and either way I'll probably do that to make sure the fan runs so let me test right here and see what we got for power all right, what I got here is a set of jumper cables hooked directly to the battery. I did have them both hooked up because I hooked the end of my test light to the red one just so I could make sure the ground was there. Um, I just wanted to make sure. But what I got here is a good known ground in my test light. I tried, it does work. So what I've done is I turned the key on. And you find we'll see. But I went down here in the purple wire. You got two wires here. You got a purple and a black one, which you can't see really. But this purple one here carries the power in, and there's your ground. And it goes through that switch, and that changes it, and that's what makes your motor run at different speeds. So what I've done was I turned the key on. I got it just like the fan should be coming on. And I stuck this test light in the purple wire lead, okay? And I turned the fan to every position there was and messed with all the controls and I cannot get no power coming to here. So, if I wanted to, I could go in here and jump and run 12 volts right to this fan motor and make sure it runs. And that piece is all the way up behind it. So I'm going to try to take and see if I can get that piece out easy. And if I can, that's fine. If not, I'll remove this motor to get it out of the way so it's easier. But I'm suspecting that resistor back there is what's bad. I am going to try to maybe test to make sure there is power going to the resistor, but I'm pretty sure it's that resistor. Okay, I took the three screws out and dropped the fan motor out, which is pretty easy. I don't know if you can see down in here or not. See the rust? And I had a hard time getting this motor to turn it was like frozen and it still when it turns it drags really hard so I'm thinking the motor okay and even though I know the motor is bad I wasn't getting power to it and the, the power goes to here first and then to the motor so what I want to do is um, check and make sure I have power going to this also okay with the key on with the in high position I get nothing if I go down to number four, I can probe into these wires here. So I'm going to do this one handed. See that one lights up on number four. Now, if I turn it down to number three, I get it on this one. So every number. I get a path of power, different one for every number on the heater switch. 
except for high I'm not getting nothing there and I'm not getting nothing coming out of here going through that resistor switch so first thing I want to do is pull the resistor switch and I'm thinking we're going to replace the fan motor because you can tell that the bearings got to be bad in there and that'll never be good okay I tested these wires and they all had power difference places on the switch and this blue wire we figured was the carrier back up to the blower motor relay and what I done was I got thinking about it well if this wire goes up to the blower motor relay and I'm not getting nothing here why wasn't I getting the lower fan speeds so I went up there and got checked and there is another fuse that I missed so never at any time think that you shouldn't second guess yourself or recheck something you've done okay so as soon as I figured out there was a fuse here that I missed um, and it's a 30 amp what I've done was and I'll show you one of these bigger fuses just so you can see but I take a fuse and I touch it here if you see the lights come on red if you go to the other side of the fuse and you get light then you know the fuse is good if you only got it on one side that would be the power coming in and if it's dead on the other side that means the fuse is more likely blowed that's providing that you have the key in the right place and the power is there to be used so when I tested this fuse right down here it showed blown now what it is I can do this see I have, I don't know if you can see my test light lighting up red but I have power now and I have power at all the fan speeds except for number one fan speed and that's what I was getting when I tested this blue wire here so that's telling me that number one fan speed on this is probably burnt out <clears throat> the motor is probably what started all this with its high resistance okay so after getting the heater motor the new one I just plugged it in and I wanted to see how it was going to work well I noticed that no positions worked except for high okay but that took care of our blowing the fuse outside I've turned it on several times let it run a little bit and it doesn't blow the fuse that got me thinking how could I have power at this purple wire on speeds 2 through 5 and the fan motor only run on 5 and then I got thinking about what I tested it with okay I tested it with one of these LED test lights and probably what I should have tested it with is one of these the old style with the bulb in it because these are so much more sensitive and doesn't take the current to light a test light up that the old ones do so after I put the right test light in position and I tested this wire I had power here at this wire with this test light only on fan speed number five all the other speeds run through this resistor and I tested I had a power at each one of these wires up here so I figured for sure that this was bad okay so what I done is I went and got another heater motor resistor and I plugged it in and now the motor works on all the speeds so keep in mind if you're diagnosing a situation like this number five on the speed of the fan the high speed on most vehicles runs direct current into the fan motor most speeds under the high or maximum fan speed runs through some kind of resistor so if I would have had a situation where the fan motor ran on high but not in the one, two, three, or four position, I was suspected this first. But the way it is right now, we have fan speed on all of them. We're not blowing a fuse. So I'm going to put this all back together. Okay, now there's a slot right back here. And this thing just slides right up in there. And then there's a screw right here in the front. And there's a screw right back here you got to put in. Okay, now with that heater and blower motor resistor in place now, there's a big round hole there. That's where your blower motor goes. So what we can do next is just simply put this blower motor up in there and put the three bolts in. 
Okay, what I found out, it was easier to disconnect the wires off of here and plug them in after you get the blower motor up in there. So let's plug that in on the blower motor in. Okay, I'm not sure if I showed this on the first of it or not. But when you take that plastic cover off here, first thing you're going to encounter is this control module. And see how this is tapered fit? There's a bracket right here with two um, things on it. And that just fits in there and slides on top of there. Okay, here's the first piece. You just got to get it up in there and work it in there. Okay, one of the things is you want to shove this all the way back up in as far as you can. I don't know if you can see right here, but there's the part of the duct work. You want to make sure you get that slid into here. And then we just got a couple bolts. Okay, now we got this first piece up here. <clears throat> what you got here is a tab right here, like a little hook. And there's a little slot right here where my finger is, long ways. What you want to do is get that tab up in that slot. There goes the light. But anyway, you get that tab up in the slot, and then there's just a push pin that fits in right over here. Okay, now that we got the plastic down here all buttoned up and put back on, I want to put these fuse panels back on. Now there's one on each side of the car here, and the one we had off underneath the hood. So we need to put all three of them back on. Okay, now that we got the covers on all the fuse panels back on, we'll turn the key on here and we'll give it a try. First speed, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So now they all work. 